In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create job template files. And these are really useful in two case scenarios. For example, if you commonly work with different sheet thicknesses, you can save these as templates to open without having to make any adjustments to the job setup form. And another example could be if you were creating a job that is interchangeable with each customer order. And that could be set up as a template where you would only need to change the customizable parts. So we're going to look at an example of both of these throughout this video. So let's go to File, Close. So we're going to start by looking at examples where we may want to save template files to match commonly used material sizes. For example, I want to create several template files for the MDF sheets that I regularly use. So that's a quarter inch thick, half inch thick, three quarter inch thick and one inch thick. So to create a template file, we first need to create a standard file. So we're going to go and create a brand new file. So working with sheet sizes, so that's 96 wide and then that is 48 high. And then for our first sheet, we're going to set that up so that it's a quarter of an inch. And then we could simply go ahead there and then press OK. So now that my file is sized up according to my quarter inch MDF sheet, I can now save this out as a template. And so to do that, you simply go to File, Save as Template, and you can open that up. And then we'll just put this in a project folder called Sheets. And we're going to call this one MDF and then 025. So I know that's the quarter inch sheet that we've just created there. And then we could go ahead there and then press save. And so if we take a look in the folder, we can see that that's been saved and it's been saved as a CRV T file. And so the T refers to the template file. And so what we can do now is we can then go ahead and we can make edits to this template and then save that out as a standard CRV file, which we'll look at shortly. So now let's just create a template file for all of the other sheets. So the half inch MDF sheet, the three quarter inch MDF sheet and the one inch MDF sheet. So we'll just go into the job dimensions and origin. And we're just going to change the thickness here to half an inch, press OK, file, save as template. And then here we're going to call this one mdf5.crvt which we'll just make that 05 and then press save there. And then we'll go back into the job dimensions. We're going to change this to three quarters of an inch, press OK, and then go to file, save as template. And then here we're going to call this one 75 or 075 in this case. And then we'll go ahead and save that. And then again, we can go into our job setup form. We're going to change that to the thickness of one inch. Press OK, File, Save as Template. And this time, I'm just going to call this one 1. So we've got mdf1.crvt. And you can see all of our templates that we've previously created within the folder structure there. And we could save that out. So I now have four commonly used sheet sizes saved out as templates, but how do we open them to work on them for a brand new job? So simply go to File, Close, and then we'll just head back to our startup page. So here you can see we have the option to create a new file from a template. And you can then click on that where you can then locate the CRV2 file that you'd like to use. And then you simply go ahead and then open it. So let's say I had an order to machine part of a cabinet that the customer needed cut in in quarter inch MDF. So I'd go to the quarter inch CRVT file and then go ahead there and then press open. And then what I can do is I can just go ahead and OK the job setup. I'm happy with the setup we've got there for this template. And then I could simply then go ahead and import the vectors that my customer has sent me in order for us to machine this out. And I can bring those vectors into my job and then go ahead and then machine them ready for the customer. And so then what we can do 
then is we can then go ahead and save this file as a standalone standard CRV file that's separate from the template. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'd simply go to file and then save as, and then in our uh, purchase order file, we'll just call this one PO Smith, and then we'll call that one 2198, ready for that particular order. And we can simply press save, and that will save that as a CRV file. So if we go into the original folder location, we can still see we have our CRVT files. And if we just go back to our orders, into that order, we can see that we have the standard CRV file that was created from our original template, which just ensures that I don't overwrite the template file so that I can use that again at a later date. And I still get to keep a copy of my customer's order as a standard CRV file that I can then go back to edit it should I need to. So let's just close out of that. Let's say you wanted to edit your template file. We can do that as well. So let's have a look. If we go to file close and then open a file from a template. So we'll go into that option there and then we'll just pull out that quarter inch MDF file again and then press open. Here you can still see the settings are exactly the same. We can okay that. And let's say you wanted to include uh, DAO holes in this example. Then you could simply draw out some circles that represent your DAOs and then just position them within your job like so, and then simply close out and then we'll just say file and then go down to save as template and then just simply overwrite the template file. So we can just overwrite it, press save, and it'll ask us if we want to replace it, in which case we can say yes. So the next time we open this template file, we'll have those DAO positions on our board. So now let's have a look at another example of where templates would be really useful. So we're just going to go to file, close, and then we're going to go and open an existing file. Okay, so in the project folder, we've got kids bedroom signs, and I have a file here called initial concept. We'll open that up. So I've got an idea for a business that I want to work on and that's creating signs for kids' bedroom doors. And so the idea is that I can just take this file and just swap out the interchangeable parts. So for example, the child's name along with the artwork. And so we've just got the vectors here to begin with. You can see all of our vectors are organized onto layers and we're going to make use of how we can use the automatic vector selection option within our toolpaths form for the software to pull out um, the vectors from the associated layers in order for us to run the toolpaths with. And then ultimately when we save this out as a template and then open it back up again to then just change out the name and the artwork, it's just simply a case of us being able to simply recalculate our toolpaths to create a brand new project. So let's quickly have a look at this. So if we just switch over to our toolpaths tab, Okay, so first off, I want to create a pocket toolpath. Okay, and we want to cut down 0.2 of an inch. We want to machine between the inner border here, the text for Rex's room, and this little dinosaur. And so what we want to do is rather than us select the vectors manually, we're going to go to the bottom of the form and use the selector option. And that will open up the vector selector form where we're able to specify various fields to tell the software which vectors we need to pull out from based on the criteria within this form. So in this case, we're going to select all closed vectors and then from the selected layers only. So in this case, we want to select the artwork, the name and the inner border. And you can see that as I select them, it's just pulled those vectors out and highlighted them so we can see where it's going to, what vectors it's going to use. And then most importantly, we must remember to check this box to associate 
these layers and the vectors on those layers with this pocket toolpath. And then we can simply go ahead and press close. I've got two tools to machine this with, and then we can simply go ahead and press calculate. Okay, and then if I wanted to, I could preview this as a global fill color. So let's go with a blue in this instance, and then we could take a look at the first toolpath. So we'll preview that one to begin with. Brilliant, and you can see why we're going to need to use the smaller tool so it can get in between the text there. So we'll simply take that smaller pocket with the eighth inch tool and then go ahead and preview that. And then that's what the sign will look like on the inside. Okay, so if we just go ahead and tile our windows and then we'll close out. Now all we need to do is create a profile toolpath to cut out our sign of our material block. And so to do so, we can go into the profile toolpath. We want to machine all the way through our material. So in this case, we'll just say Z and equals. And then we could choose the tool. So we'll just go with the quarter inch tool that's in there. We want to machine on the outside of our outer vector here. And so when, again, we're not going to manually select those vectors. We're going to go into the vector selector option, whereby we want to specify closed vectors on selected layers only. We're going to uncheck these options and select the outer border, where we can then simply associate that with the toolpath, close out, and then simply go ahead there and then press calculate. And then we can preview that toolpath and then double click that, and then that is our initial concept sign for Rex's room. So here what we could do then is we could go ahead and we can save this file out as a template, and it will save that template out with these toolpaths. So we could go to File, Save as Template, and then if we just go to our Kids Bedroom Signs folder, we could just call this one bedroom sign and then go ahead there and then press save and I could simply close out of the toolpath preview form file close out of our bedroom sign file it's asking us if we want to make any changes to this we're going to say no in this instance because we've already saved the actual template file so now let's suppose that I've put that sign on social media and someone's got in touch and said that they'd love to have a similar sign for their daughter Molly but could you use something that's a little more girly so we can do that so all we need to do is go ahead and open the new file from our template so we've got our bedroom sign dot crvt Okay, and then here we can see we've got our original sign. So we've got Rex's room. So all we need to do is alter out the name. So first off, let's go over, I'm just going to alter this and we're going to change it now to Molly, like so. And then we can close out. And then what we can do is we could say, we don't want the dinosaur here, but let's see what else we could bring in. So we could import vectors and in our project folder, if we go to the kids bedroom signs, you can see we've got a flower or we've got a butterfly. So let's try the flower in this case. We'll open that up and then we'll just position that somewhere in the center there like so and then we're actually going to right click and just say move to layer and we're going to move that to the artwork layer and we're making sure that we're moving the artwork to the artwork layer so that when we come to recalculate our toolpaths the software will be able to pick up this artwork from the artwork layer for when we come to calculate those toolpaths and then we, you can see we can just simply delete this layer here is we don't need it. And so to double check, we've got the outer border, the artwork, the name, and the inner border. And then if we just switch over to our toolpaths tab, it's just simply a case now of just recalculating all of our toolpaths. We could go ahead and press OK. And then what we can do is we can go and preview those toolpaths. So let's say now actually we wanted to make that purple inside. We could then go ahead there and then preview all of the toolpaths and we should see those changes 
taking place and you've seen how quick that was to do that and again what we could do there is we can then save this file as an actual CRV file so we'll say save as and then in here we're going to call this one Molly and then simply press save and that saved that as a CRV file it hasn't affected the template file and then we can simply just close out and that's pretty much it and then you could have another order come through in which case we could go to the new file from our template we go back to the bedroom sign open that up and you can see that it hasn't affected the original template and then again it's just a case of swapping out the name so here we could say that we want to change this one to Ron okay so Ron's room close out let's say Ron didn't want the dinosaur we could delete that and then we could go and import some vectors so here we have a rocket so we could open that up and then we could take that and then just move that over to the right hand side maybe we could put that on a tilt there maybe just move that over to the right and then again let's just take the vectors on this layer we're just going to right click to move them to the artwork layer and then we'll just delete that import there so we'll just delete this layer so we've got the outer border the artwork the name and the inner border and then if we go over to our toolpath preview we can recalculate all of our toolpaths so that's successful okay there into the toolpath preview form let's change the color of that to green and then we'll just simply preview all of our toolpaths for our new order for Ron's room and there we go we can see how that looks and you can see how quickly it is to create brand new projects brand new customizable projects based on an original template and again we could go ahead there and just save that out as a general crv file so we'll just call this one ron and then simply press save so hopefully that demonstrates the efficient ways of working with job templates to help get repeatable jobs done quickly without running the risk of overwriting your original data